Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Freak Trades indicators and I'm going to show you how to graphically represent those indicators on your live chart data. That's really a lot more helpful than just looking at configuration files and putting in data points and hoping that your buy and sell indicators line up with what the market is doing. So let me show you how that works. We can see here I have an example of a basic strategy file and you see I've got some extra lines and things on here that are going along with the live candle data. Now these are the actual indicators for my buy and my sell markers and now I can see what they're doing in real time and when a buy signal is triggered and when a sell signal is triggered. Also below I have some subplots. So these are some other indicators that you can break off into subplots if you'd rather just kind of see what they're doing while your trades are happening and while the market is moving. So let's see what that looks like over in a strategy file. Now, if we take a look at our buy trend and our sell trend, this is where in our strategy file, we're defining what things are going to trigger a buy signal and what things are going to trigger a sell signal. And as I said earlier, just representing these here in text, it gets really difficult to see for sure what is gonna happen against that live market data. For example, here, I've got a, just a really simple indicator here that shows some relationships between fast D and fast K and also what level the RSI needs to be below in order to trigger a buy. And conversely, I have some really simple data points here that say fast D and fast K need to be at a certain level. And in addition, RSI needs to be over 60 in order to indicate a sell trend. Okay, this is very, very simplified. I'm doing this really just so we can see graphically what that looks like when we then pop over to our web UI, this is Freak UI. This will help you fine tune your strategy files much, much more efficiently when you can just actually see what the data is doing live. And you can see these are broken up by the main plot and subplots. So the main plot is gonna be data that overlays on your actual candles in that same chart, okay? So that's really helpful if you're looking for indicators that say, hey, above this or below that, and you wanna see those lines graphically represented. This will let you do that. So you can plug in, for example, I just have my EMA high and my EMA low. That's my top and bottom on this particular indicator. And then secondly, over on the subplot section, this is where you can put that plot that's below. So if you notice that down below there, I have two separate subplots and one of those is my RSI indicator. And then I have a second one for my CCI indicator. And you can add anything you want in here. One thing that's important to remember, if we go back to our strategy file, any of the indicators that you pull in here, they have to be set up as indicators inside your strategy file, because otherwise Freak Trade is not reading that data. So it doesn't have any data to spit out onto your chart. So even if you're not using those indicators in your actual strategy, you just wanna know, hey, what is RSI doing when I'm trading against this particular algorithm? You can put that in here, even if it's not referenced anywhere, like in your buy indicators or sell indicators, but you're gonna reference it in your plot charts. That's where it needs to be so that it's pulling that data so that you have something to plot, okay? Let me show you a quick example of this. I think the UI is a little bit confusing. It took me a while to figure out exactly how to get these charts to show up properly. And once I figured it out, it wasn't too bad, but let me just save you a little time. Let's take a subplot, for example. In subplots, where it says new subplot, go ahead and type one. I'm gonna add one for MFI. I know I have that indicator and I hit the plus icon, it's gonna create a new subplot. Now, once I have that subplot selected in the lower area, I need to find that indicator that I wanna to add to that chart, that subplot. I'm gonna go find MFI, select it and hit the right arrow to add it into the used indicators section. And you'll see in the background, it automatically popped in down there. You can also change the color if you want. So you'll notice that it's gonna just randomly generate a color. So you can hit this little refresh button here to cycle through random colors and add a color that makes sense to you if you like. This is a hex code, so you can just put in a very specific color by hex code if you want to. And then hit save and okay, and now you're back to your chart. And now we see at the bottom here, I have this third subplot, which is my MFI data. You also notice that as you hover over these data points, it's giving you that slice in time of exactly what those values were at that time. So guys, this is super helpful when you're fine tuning a strategy file to figure out what is happening real time with that data. 
So for example, if I take this section over here where I saw a good dip in our price point and my high speed strategy, I would have liked to have taken advantage of that dip. But as we can see, I don't have a buy indicator in here. The buy indicators are the little green triangle. I don't have a buy indicator in here. So what I might want to do then, if that's something I wanted to try to exploit and take advantage of, I'd probably want to look at those data points at that particular slice in time and see where they were moving at that time and decide if one of my indicators needs to have a threshold that's adjusted a little bit so that I would have triggered some buy signals in that dip. And then conversely, I'm looking at sell signals. If I'm using sell signals versus percentage or other types of you know positive stop loss, positive trailing stop losses for my profit taking or uh, ROI indicators, if I'm using sell indicators, I wanna see up here when the price was, was doing well and it was pulling profits, but then it fell off pretty sharply. I wanna see why it is that I did not trigger a sell indicator. And if there was some indicator that I could have adjusted to have triggered that top end sell signal so that I could take advantage of that price increase. So these little fine tuning bits are really how you can take advantage of these volatile market conditions and potentially generate some profit. If you're not already, please subscribe, hit that like button, helps me out a lot. Hit the notification bell so you see the next one coming in. We're gonna be doing a lot more of these little deep dives onto some of these indicators and how you can improve your strategy files and have some fun with this. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.